when you look at most of the mature grappling arts of the world, uh, they're typically divided into uh, what the Japanese would call tachiwaza, or standing technique, mm -hmm. and ground technique, neiwaza. In wrestling, for example, you'll see that there are standing takedowns, and there's also several parterre moves, moves down on the, on the floor. Um, Jiu-Jitsu is different from many of the uh, other mature grappling arts, insofar as really it's only concerned with, with ground grappling. There are standing techniques, but in all honesty, they receive it only a tiny amount of attention and um, it's not uncommon to see even high-level black belts with undeveloped standing technique. Um, I believe this is in a sense done great things for uh, grappling and bad things. That increasing specialization on the part of judo standing technique the rule system of judo currently greatly rewards standing technique, much more so than, than they was a ground technique. Uh, has meant that the overall level of uh, throwing ability has risen remarkably since say the 1950s, and um, uh, judo now, with its current rule system, is, is producing generations of people around the world who are just unbelievably effective at coming out, controlling their opponents in the standing position, and throwing them uh, to the ground. In Jiu Jitsu, it's resulted in a generation of students who are incredibly effective at starting on the floor and working their way through uh, various positional and submission moves down on the mat. Um, and so the, the technical level within sharply defined areas is rising rapidly as the years go by. Uh, even in the time that I've been involved in the sport, I've seen a huge amount of development in the sport of Jiu Jitsu. Uh, and, uh, and, and that's a great thing, okay? But on the negative side, it's meant that we're, we're raising grapplers who are so compartmentalized in their skill set that when they try to go outside into, say for example, mixed martial arts, they often encounter problems. They, uh, they, they appear to be um, unassailable within their domain, but taken outside of that, uh, they often look surprisingly limited, and uh, so, so as I said, there's this, the, the great positive of increasing specialization has been rapid technical improvement within certain areas, uh, but it's come at a price, and that price is uh, the overall effectiveness of the grapplers uh, seen from the big picture, can they win a fight? Uh, and. Uh, I think a vision of the future would be one in which you would see a grappler raised from an early age who is equally effective in both standing and ground techniques. That would be the ideal. Okay? And it seems like in some respects, not all respects, but in some respects we're getting further and further away from that ideal of the well-rounded grappler. We're going into an age of the specialist. As I said, that's had a positive effect in some ways. It's meant that in their domain, technical expertise has, has rapidly uh, risen, but uh, put in a context of uh, overall grappling skill, how would they do in a, in a say for example, a fight situation, uh, I think it's been in some ways detrimental. And so this vision of the future that I have is of a group of athletes who are equally effective in both standing and ground, equally effective gi and no gi. Will they have the highly specialized skills of uh, someone who devotes all of their time and energy to one small area? No, of course not. But they will be uh, this idea of a well-rounded grappler. Um, the idea is to raise someone in the future who could conceivably go to a world championships in judo one week and excel, do extremely well, compete successfully at the highest levels. Then the very next week, compete in a highly competitive Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu tournament and again get into the top placings and then the week after that go into a Nogi Abu Dhabi tournament and again get into the highest rankings and do very very well within that short time frame. So we're in a three week period, three world championships and, uh, and absolutely test the limits of every, everyone they come up against and, and score in the, in the medal placings. That would be the ideal that I would be striving for. Um, that's why Travis Stevens is such an interesting student to me, because he's one person, 
much earlier than anyone else, I believe, who's striving for that ideal. Um, I remember when I was training Travis early last year, um, being incredibly impressed by the fact that at one point he competed in a Judo World Championships. A week later, competed in uh, the Copa Podio, one of the most competitive judicial tournaments in the world, um, invitation only, did incredibly well in both events, and then a week after that was training with uh, Chris Weidman and George St. Pierre in mixed martial arts, no gi, and doing very well with both of them. Um, and that's the ideal that I want to espouse in, uh, in grappling, of someone who can, who can do it all, and do it all at a very, very high level of expertise. Okay? It's, I don't want to raise all-rounders who are mediocre at everything. Okay? That, I, I would rather be a specialist, I'd rather be good at something than to be mediocre at everything. Okay? Um, but what I do want, and this, I, I thought it would take someone trained from a very early age, uh, and in the future, we'll see people like this who can excel in all, in all elements. Travis Stevens was the, the first uh, person I trained who, who excelled in every aspect of grappling um, and did it in a remarkably short period of time and starting relatively late. I often run into this problem when people uh, seek instruction in in grappling and also in mixed martial arts. We'll often get people who come from a boxing background or a kickboxing background. They're like, listen, I'm not interested in really learning jiu-jitsu. Just teach me how to get out of a submission hole. Teach me how to get out of a triangle. Teach me how to do this. In other words, they want to learn tiny pieces of the puzzle. This approach is always doomed to failure. You're never going to learn how to get out of a high-level jiu-jitsu competitor's submission hole just by snatching a little piece of information here, a little piece of information there. Um, the wise thing to do is to devote yourself to the sport. Okay? Uh, you'll often see you know, jiu-jitsu guys come into a wrestling club, show me just how to stop a single leg. Well, you're not really going to learn how to stop a single leg until you're highly competent at performing a single leg. You can't just learn a piece of the puzzle. You've got to take on the whole project. People don't want to hear this because it takes time and effort. But really, that's the only way to go. That's the logic that Travis is trying to, uh, to, to work with here. In this case, I can only talk with regards to the sport of mixed martial arts. Uh, because that's the only time where I'm directly involved in someone's training all the way through to the fight. I help people prepare for grappling competition, but I don't accompany them to grappling tournaments. Um, so I'll, I'll talk in terms of my mixed martial arts coaching experience. Um, really, it comes down to familiarization. Okay, you've got to look at what is the event, what, uh, what, what can you reasonably expect to be going on when they compete in the, the sport of mixed martial arts and this fight in particular. You've got to bring them into experiences which mimic what you can reasonably expect to happen. There has to be a level of stress um, uh, which prepares them for it but isn't so stressful that it actually detracts from their confidence or uh, physically injures them. So uh, you, have to, you have to strike a, a compromise between softness and hardness. The training has to be hard enough that it's realistic but it can't be so brutally hard that it actually breaks them, uh, both mentally and physically. Um, so uh, this is the, the, the main thing we work on, familiarization. You know, they must train in more or less the same kind of environment. I remember when George St. Pierre fought Johnny Hendricks, he, uh, he heard through the grapevine that Johnny Hendricks was going to train in Las Vegas in the actual octagon that uh, they would be fighting in. And he thought this was too much of an advantage. For Johnny Hendricks, so he simply bought a UFC Octagon at considerable personal expense and put it in his gym so that he would train in exactly the same dimensions, exactly the same floor surface on a daily basis. Um, so that kind of general familiarization of, of uh, putting yourself into more or less the same situation you can expect out there in the, uh, uh, in the event you're competing in is uh, the, the, the way that I help people prepare for competition.
I see Travis as a vision of the future. Um, Travis represents, in, in my coaching experience, the closest I've seen to a fully well-rounded grappler. Okay, this is, we're talking about a guy who can compete in world championships in judo one week, jiu-jitsu the next, and submission grappling the week after, without a problem. Um, he got there sooner than most because he came from an extensive grappling program, but also because he was very smart. He didn't try to learn just enough jiu-jitsu to learn judo. He took it on as a, as a separate project, and so he took on the whole sport of jiu-jitsu, the whole sport of judo, the whole sport of submission grappling. Um, uh, he threw himself into the project, as it were, and didn't try to just steal a little piece here, a little piece there. Um, I believe that uh, future generations of students will look at people like Travis Stevens as an inspiration and a guiding light. Someone who uh, early on in the game represented that ideal of the truly well-rounded grappler. It will be a similar mindset to one, the one exhibited by Travis himself, which is one of just uh, and almost an addiction to training of an obsession with technique and, uh, and, and the learning of a craft or a skill over time. Um, Travis is without question one of the hardest working athletes that I've ever had the pleasure of, uh, of teaching and, and training. Um, even George St. Pierre, who was legendarily hard working in, in, in the gym, used to uh, look at me and in his broken English he would say, this Travis fellow you bring here, he's not afraid of hard work, is he? Um, he, no matter how badly injured he is, he'll tape himself up and he'll show up in the gym. There were times he was so badly injured they wouldn't let him train in Boston. He would drive to New York um, uh, in order to sneak down here and train. Uh, when George St. Pierre needed him in, in training camps, he would, without even so much as a, a moment's hesitation, jump in his car and drive four hours come up and train in the afternoon and then get right back in the car and drive four hours back home to Boston for judo practice. This is a guy who, who lives to train. He'll travel to Europe for, uh, for, for a seminar and uh, train, just an opportunity to train with, with fellow competitors uh, and then be back in uh, the United States for a jiu-jitsu tournament and then right back to, to France for a judo tournament. This, this is a man who's uh, just one of the hardest working human beings I've ever had the pleasure to meet. Um, I think that students coming up in the future will have to have that similar mindset of, uh, of throwing themselves into a life of training. This is not this ideal of the complete grappler is not for the faint heart of it. It's not something that you can just do on the weekends. This is uh, you know, devoting your life to learning what could easily be three different sports, mission grappling, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and Judo. Any one of those would be a lifetime endeavor and you're taking on all three in one lifetime. That's gonna take an extraordinary effort. Uh, so I believe that the mindset involved comes down ultimately to, to work ethic and uh, Travis is an ideal that anyone involved in grappling can, can look up to and, and aspire to. Uh, he was unrivaled uh, with regards to his, uh, his desire to, to perform hard work in an intelligent fashion and make forward progress. And that's why I believe he makes such rapid progress in the sport of jiu-jitsu.